In today's video, all models predict another serious storm that could dump inches to two feet of snow in the Great Lakes and the Northeast in time for Christmas travel. Then the jet stream is going bonkers as a historic Arctic outbreak could send temperatures down to as low as negative 35 degrees with wind chills as low as negative 65 degrees in some areas. So in this video, we'll break those details down so you can be prepared. Good afternoon everyone, it is David Schlothauer here, your weather enthusiast, and welcome back to another video. Before I do get started, if you are new to the channel and you really like these videos, please consider subscribing, hitting the like button, and sharing this video with your family and friends on social media. Okay, so here's a look at the detailed European global computer model for Saturday evening. This just got rendered about 15 minutes ago, and this is for Tuesday afternoon next week on December the 20th. And we can see where the snow actually is here because this is the winter storm that is going to be causing a lot of problems for the Midwest, for the Northern Plains, as well as for the Great Lakes in the Northeast. This could be bringing quite a bit of snow, some strong winds and blizzard conditions, and most importantly, the extreme cold Arctic air that we will be talking about in this video. So going day by day for your travel Christmas forecast, we can see quite a bit of snowfall for the Pacific Northwest, for the Northern Rockies there in Montana, in Idaho, in Wyoming. Gonna see some moderate to heavy snow in Colorado and some blizzard conditions because we're gonna have some strong winds with this winter storm as it develops. But this is in the early stages. Wait until we get into Thursday and Friday for your Christmas travel forecast. This is going to cause a lot of problems. So for Thursday morning, it is snowing pretty good in Omaha, Nebraska. If you're in Kansas, if you're in Iowa, if you're in Minnesota, Wisconsin, again, still in the development stages here. So if you're doing any truck driving, if you're um, hauling your trailer, if you're going anywhere uh, for the holidays, Keep in mind, there's going to be quite a bit of snowfall um, on the roadways. And on top of that, strong winds will lead to ground blizzard-like conditions, blowing snow, and much colder temperatures. Please prepare for quite a bit of extra time and significant delays because the snow is going to be coming down pretty good. And by the time we go into Friday, a Thursday night into Friday, that's when the system really takes shape. We're talking about very tight isobars here. So this is the uh, pressure difference in a, sh um, in a rather short distance, what we call the pressure gradient difference or gra uh, pressure gradient force. And that's gonna lead to very strong winds. So we're talking about really heavy snowfall. We're talking about very cold temperatures. We're talking a lot about blizzard-like weather conditions in Indiana, in Kentucky, and portions of Tennessee. If you are in Wisconsin, if you're in Minnesota, if you're in Iowa, keep that in mind. Gonna be really rough for your Thursday evening into Friday morning, and this continues throughout the day Friday. So the, the day before Christmas Eve, very dynamic system here. Really gonna be making possible national headlines. Definitely on your local news station, we'll be talking a lot about this. Again, I'm not here for the hype. I'm just uh, extrapolating what I see. And what I see is a very, very dynamic, nasty storm system that develops across the Great Lakes for next week. So any road travel, any air travel, you will have significant delays. And there's another winter storm here for the Pacific Northwest that could bring more snow, more freezing rain, and more sleet. Gonna be a lot of problems um, throughout this week. So really um, plan around the rough weather if you can and do so to um, this weekend or early next week, like on Monday or even Tuesday before the big storm really gets going. And then this gets into the Northeast by the time we go into Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. With that being said, there's gonna be some lake effect snow, maybe for um, Lake Michigan, Lake Erie, Lake Ontario, Lake Huron. Could see quite a bit of lake effect snow out of that. And then more interesting weather across the Pacific Northwest. So now we took a look at the European model. What does a GFS model tell us? Well, a very similar situation. Here's a look at Wednesday night into Thursday morning. There's our system. Very dynamic. It's starting to look like that. And look at the pressure. 1,061 millibars. That's that Arctic air that is going to really be settling in. And wait until you see how cold those temperatures could actually get. 
So by Friday, um, the day before Christmas Eve, this has a much southern track, which means more moisture with this, more heavier snow over Indiana, over Tennessee, over Kentucky, over Missouri, over Michigan. Very dynamic. Look at that system. Very, very powerful and mature. And I'll bet you right now we're going to um, be talking a lot about this. I might need to make two videos on this on um, Monday and probably on Tuesday because of how substantial this storm could actually be and of course for the pacific northwest we're talking a lot about more snow more freezing rain more sleet and of course we got our big monster over here lurking in the woods in the northeast in the great lakes and the midwest the ozarks really going to get pummeled uh, all the way through christmas eve and christmas day with lake effect snow on the back side of the system here's a look at those snowfall totals and boy don't they look significant here especially for michigan and for indiana could get one to maybe two feet of snow now I just said that because of what I see on the models, but probably not going to see two feet of snow, but there is going to be enough to shovel up out there for sure. If you are in the Great Lakes, even if you're in the Midwest, there could be as much as 6 to 12 inches of snowfall. Quite a bit of snow up here across the Pacific Northwest, British Columbia, Alberta, Canada, if you are in... Um, Basically, in portions there of Quebec and Ontario, Canada, you might see one to two feet of snow. Some areas here might even get three feet of snow if it is uh, if it pans as it is what the GFS global computer model indicates. So a very impactful system, but guess what? It's more impactful on the European model. And this is coming again from the European global model, one of the more accurate models out there as far as meteorological scales go. So quite a bit of snow for the Pacific North West, but most importantly my goodness there's gonna be a lot of snow here if you're in the great lakes could see some areas that are prone to the lake effect snow through christmas day you might see two to almost three feet of snowfall so talk about a white christmas you're probably gonna be seeing more of a stormy white christmas instead because there's gonna be some heavy lake effect snow, there's gonna be strong winds, it's gonna be cold, so make sure you are ready and you're dressed for the cold, wicked weather that is coming your way, because there is gonna be a lot of snowfall with six to 12 inches of snow, maybe for um, Iowa, and maybe um, five to eight inches of snow there for portions of Missouri, and further south you go, lesser snow, that's because of the track of the surface low as it um, kicks up that moisture. All right, so we know how much snow there is going to be, but why such a dynamic system? Why are we going to see a very large system in the first place? Well, this is a look at the 500 millibar or 18,000 feet into the atmosphere, so above the ground, and we're looking at the jet stream. When we get a strong dynamic jet here, you'll see this, and that's when we get a very strong system that develops. So by Thursday, by Friday, we can see how this really sets up. Very strong jet streak on the GFS model. I mean, that's 150 knots over Alabama, over Georgia. That is very far south where that trough goes, and it increases here. 165 knots, close to 170 knots. That is very extreme when you think about the upper level dynamic support. We got the left exit region of the jet that is over Pennsylvania, over, say, portions of Ohio, West Virginia. Very strong system, and this continues all all the way to Friday and Saturday. That's why we are going to be seeing possibly one of the strongest winter storms so far this winter season over the Great Lakes, over the Northeast, all because of how dynamic this jet stream, this trough actually is. And just to show you how dynamic this is, here's a look at another way to look at the trough. This is um, surface pressures and isobars. That, those are all the lines that you see. And this is at the 500 millibar level two when we take a look at all the colors. This is geopotential height. So this is another way of looking at the atmosphere in when you're looking at the, the state of the atmosphere. And so lower heights mean 
colder temperatures and more active weather. And so we can see how deep this trough actually um, kind of digs down into the Great Lakes, into the eastern seaboard. And that's why we have such a dynamic system. And I mean, we could have pressures as low as 960, 958 millibars over portions of Pennsylvania and New York. And boy, will that kick up the winds. As matters of fact, here's a look at your wind forecast. And this is uh, let's go back to here. We can see our winds are going to be a very big problem, especially on Friday and on Saturday, Christmas Eve. Winds are going to be roaring over the Great Lakes, and that's going to really kick up the lake effect snow machine quite hard. And then those winds should back off slowly by the time we get into Christmas Day. But, ooh, it's going to be active all the way from, say, probably uh, Wednesday, maybe even Tuesday, all the way through perhaps maybe even to uh, Friday and Saturday as this winter storm glides its way across the northern tier of the United States. Another big story will be the cold Arctic temperatures. And I mean business here. We are talking about air temperatures that could be as cold as negative 30, negative 35 degrees. On top of that, when you factor in the strong winds, yeah, you're going to have wind chill values as cold as negative 60, negative 65 degrees in some of the coldest prone areas. Yeah, so get ready for this, folks. Again, this is a look at Monday morning. Not so bad, right? We could handle negative 5, negative 15 degrees in some areas here in the Dakotas, in Minnesota, in Wisconsin, in, say, portions of Montana, Wyoming. A little warmer to the south as we have warm air advection coming in ahead of the system. We got cooler temperatures um, reminiscence in portions of the Great Lakes, the Ozarks, and the Northeast, but it's coming. It's going to get colder. Wait until you see um, this map here um, in just a second. This is on uh, Tuesday afternoon. As we go forward in time, we can see this cold air really racing further south. This is by Thursday morning. Some areas here could have temperatures as cold as negative 20 to negative 30 degrees. Portions of Montana, negative uh, 30 to negative 40 degrees also. So very cold Canadian Arctic temperatures really going to be felt across much of the plains as well as the Great Lakes. Look at this still on the European model. It still thinks that portions of Indiana and Ohio could be as cold as four degrees to start your uh, Friday morning. So very, very cold out there. Make sure you bundle up. And then of course, if you're in portions of Montana um, and portions of the Dakotas and Nebraska, negative 15 to negative 20, and then Montana, negative 35 degrees. This continues to be a really big problem all the way into Saturday where temperatures during the day will stay probably down across the negative 15 to negative 20 degree range. And then it gets even colder than that probably as soon as Sunday, Christmas morning, could be as cold as negative 25 degrees. Santa Claus not going to like these temperatures very much. And so are you. You're not going to like to want to drive in this because it's going to be too cold to probably keep your car nice and cozy or to keep your house nice and warm. But still, very cold. Negative 20 degrees in portions of Iowa all the way down into central and southern Missouri. Wow. Very cold in the morning hours there, and that will continue all the way through probably the early part of next week. Now, another dangerous weapon that these temperatures have with them is the wind chill. Yeah, we're now going to make it feel colder because of the winds that are going to be stronger out there. So let's take a look at that. Very cold temperatures here. I mean, my goodness, Thursday morning could feel like negative 63 degrees, negative 61, might feel like negative 60 in portions of Nebraska. Omaha might feel like negative 40 degrees to start your Thursday morning. Yeah. Ouch. That's going to be very cold. Still very cold across Montana. And this is just going to escalate already into Friday morning. Might feel like negative 40, close to negative 45 in Omaha, Nebraska. Look at these temperatures, how cold it might feel. Negative 14 in Indiana, down here across the deep south, negative one. And then up here, negative 50 to negative 55 degrees, close to negative 60 in some areas. So the cold air is going to really be a big problem problem across much of the nation. And again, this is likely to make national headlines. Now, one more model I do want to bring up is the GFS model, because that one looks a little bit more serious when we play that through here. It's loading for me, so give it some time, but very cold here still 
um, for Wednesday, for Thursday. Um, GFS, I'm really um, curious at bringing uh, much colder air too, but not as significant as the European model. The GFS has not really loved the Arctic um, outbreak as much as the European model, which is why I use the European model because it's a more accurate model. It's likely to not uh, downplay this. So that's why I'm really concerned about it. The GFS can be a little fiddly or fiddle faddle sometimes. Okay, so now your temperature anomaly forecast gonna be something else to really watch closely because it's going to be cold. Yeah, take a look at these temperatures. 40 to almost 50 degrees below average in some areas here. Oops, not that. So very cold uh, with this Arctic outbreak that comes in. And it's going to feel cold all across the board by Christmas Eve, by Christmas Day. Temperatures could still be 30 to 40 degrees below average in a lot of areas. Like even down here across Florida, temperatures could be close to 30 degrees below average after dealing with temperatures that um, got close to records just a couple or a few days ago. So just switching things around out of control thanks to, again, the very strong um, polar vortex that is dropping very, fa uh, very far southward. So now that we talked about this winter storm and very cold Arctic outbreak, I think it's a pretty good idea that you stay tuned to this YouTube channel by hitting the red subscribe button, hitting the bell notification icon, and sharing this video with your family and friends on social media. This is one of those winter storms I will probably end up live streaming on to keep you guys on your toes with any significant weather that hits your localized area. So you only could do that if you do subscribe, share this, and also leave a comment in the section below help show your support um, because we've got to get this out to as many people as we can possible as this is a national headline type weather event that you could be dealing with but anyways if you did enjoy the video thank you all for tuning in and i will be back with you more with awesome weather content tomorrow on this youtube channel don't miss anything because i'll have more updates coming